All right, this is the chapter seven, section two, or the end of the revolution. This is the uh, end of section two, revolution, terror, and the death of the French monarchy. All right, so when we left France, they were battling Austria and Prussia. And um, mainly because of that, um, there's a lot of fear within France that the revolution itself is going to be threatened. Um, the uh, Duke of Brunswick is the guy who's in charge of the Prussian forces, and he threatens to attack Paris. He basically writes an open letter. It gets printed in the French newspapers, and he says, if anything has happened to the king, the queen, or any of the royal family, um, I'm going to flatten your town. And he intends this to intimidate the people of Paris. Instead, it has the opposite effect. They are not intimidated. They are pissed, and they... Um, break into the to the prisons they kill thousands of people no trials really awful massacre and slaughter um break in to um the uh tuileries palace where the uh royal family was staying and um the royal family is forced to uh seek shelter and protection from the, the national assembly um and when you have to go to your jailer for protection then basically you you have no power um the legislative assembly formally votes to depose the king uh, then they dissolve themselves and reform in what they call the national convention and with no king whatsoever this is not a constitutional monarchy anymore this is now a republic um, the royal family is thrown in jail they're given three rooms in the temple prison and that is the temple prison it's a pretty horrid place um, now their rooms are not horrific um, and they are at this moment still kept together which is nice um, but things are going to get a little scarier when a political party known as the Jacobins take control um, the Jacobins if you remember this is the group that includes Robespierre and Danton they are the ones that um, are really pushing for real radical change they want a brand new society completely different from the top down to the bottom um, their goal is to put the king on trial for treason and they get their wish um, after a close vote uh, Louis the 16th is found guilty of treason and he is sent to the guillotine there is Robespierre and there is Danton Citoyen, dites-moi ce que je dois faire, monsieur. Il faut enlever votre redingote et votre cravate. Je meurs, innocent de tous les crimes dont on m'accuse. Je pardonne à ceux qui sont coupables de ma mort. Et je prie Dieu pour que le sang que vous allez répandre ne retombe jamais sur la France. Que...
the guillotine. Um, the guillotine is interesting because not only is it their preferred method of execution, but it really is considered to be an enlightened execution method. They believe that um, if everyone is, is killed the same, in a relatively, at least to the best of their opinion, relatively painless way, that this is, is, is this enlightened. Whereas, you know, we know in the beginning, um, uh, Robespierre was against the death penalty. Um, and the guillotine, at least in Robespierre's opinion, is a way of uh, quickly and humanely executing people regardless of their social status the poor will no longer be you know drawn and quartered and disemboweled and tortured and the rich will um no longer you know get the the nice execution so um apparently you can buy a guillotine at ikea all right, the war continues. Um, the French army finally begins to rally, and they're starting to uh, win against the Prussians and the Austrians. In 1793, um, more nations jump on board in the um, I Hate France Club. Uh, you've got Britain, Spain, and Holland. Now, um, you know, for the cases of Spain, they're a monarchy, and they probably don't want to encourage this revolution either. But in the cases of Britain and Holland, well... You know, this might be the chance to either get back at uh, France or carve off some land and some territory um, and um, generally just weaken it. The National Convention orders a draft and 300,000 men are drafted to reinforce the army. So here is a wonderful map um, that shows you uh, those hot pink areas, okay, in uh, Nantes and Toulouse and Marseille. Okay, those are areas of open civil war. Um, those baby pink areas, or kind of salmon-y areas, those are areas of minor insurrection. So in those reddish pink areas, the, the deep pink and the light pink, those are all places that were rebellious rebelling against the revolution um so you can see like they've got a serious problem they are in the middle of a civil war at the same time that they are fighting these other uh, countries you can see the arrows where the british fleet are attacking the spaniards are coming in on one side the prussians and the austrians are coming in on the other side um the french are making some headway up there into the holy roman empire where you can see the uh uh, Cologne and um, and uh, the Netherlands and in yellow down there the kingdom of Sardinia they have annexed and um, the guy who's responsible for that is coming up in our next section all right so the terror um, this is a, a painting of nobles and aristocrats awaiting execution you can see there's you know families whole families in here and that is just how it went um, you know, it was an insanely bloody time for France in order to get this liberty, equality, and fraternity. They killed a ton of people. Um, Robespierre kind of rises to the top and he assumes control of the Jacobins, which have assumed control of the um, assembly. And for a while, he is basically ruling France. Um, he creates um, this idea of terror, to strike terror into the, the enemies of the revolution. And this needs to be handled quickly, and it needs to be handled um, somewhat privately. So he creates the Committee for Public Safety. Um, in essence, this small group is like an oligarchy, a small group of people controlling the entire country. And they steer this reign of terror, the terror. 85% um, of those who die during the terror are middle or lower class. Um, you know, someone accuses you of being um, unfaithful to the ideals of the revolution. Um, thousands upon thousands die, including uh, former allies uh, like Danton and uh, Marie Antoinette herself. Here is a, uh, on the right is a picture of Marie Antoinette with her youngest child, uh, who at this point, if you are a monarchist, is Louis the Seventeenth, and um, there she is in the conciergerie uh, in her little cell before her execution, and there she is walking away to execution. Cried as they liked writing about aristocrats, they had to say that she'd been dignified. So they said it was the the pride of a habitual criminal. Il y a un crayon de David qui montre une très vieille femme que l'on conduit à la guillotine avec un courage extraordinaire et une dignité 
euh, incroyable. She showed no sign of fear. Some people achieve miracles of, of decent self-control and composure. At that moment, which must be an incredible moment of panic, she still reflects perfect form. She climbed the stairs to the guillotine very lightly, without a pause. A sort of natural heroism. She did die as a queen. It was noon. With the blade suspended above her, Marie Antoinette moved forward and accidentally stepped on the executioner's foot. Pardon me, sir. I did not do it on purpose. Marie Antoinette's severed head was held high before a screaming crowd. She was buried in an unmarked grave. Ce qui la place véritablement dans la légende, c'est cette mort affreuse. Il y a mythe parce que c'était une femme frivole qui s'est transformée bien malgré elle et parce que sa vie s'est achevée par une abominable tragédie. She's gone on a very long journey through hell and back. And with each defeat and each disaster, behave with transcendent courage. But as a queen, she is a catastrophe because she makes a constitutional monarchy impossible. A relatively peaceful transition from an old world of an absolute monarchy to a new world of a constitutional monarchy is screwed. That door is closed. All of our own natural humane response to her being someone who behaves with a growing sense of tragic intelligence does not compensate it's tragedy for France, but it's also in the Greek sense of tragedy being no way out, of playing out your destiny. It is indeed deeply a personal tragedy. It's a story which goes between two extremes. She was a girl whose destiny is the happiest possible destiny. All she wanted and all she created was made from flowers and uh, sounds. It's a vanishing kingdom. By the end, everything she had is taken away from her. Everything and everybody she loved. the end of the terror. The terror has to end. No one's quite sure how. Um, people are getting angrier and angrier and angrier that this seems to be an out-of-control mob running Paris. Um, so how do we end it? Well, it turns out we end it by killing Robespierre. Um, in July of 94, uh, Robespierre is arrested and he is executed. Um, the terror has shifted public opinion away from Robespierre and the radicals to a more moderate uh, stance. And those moderate leaders now write a new constitution, create a two-house legislature similar to ours, and a five-man directory to sort of run the country like an executive. Um, this is sort of a calm 
period for France until a nice little man shows up. Now, this is the death mask of Robespierre. It's a uh, wax model made of him after his uh, guillotining. Uh, guillotining? Is that a word? Guillotining? Execution.
to coup d'etat, ooh, ooh, ooh la la, Napoleon's here.